Hey folks, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Well, it's fruit tree day. Our fruit trees are about to come out of dormancy and we need to prepare them for their second year of growing in our backyard. And I'll show you how we're gonna treat our apple tree whips back there. And I'll show you how we're gonna clean up our little uh, uh, plum tree right here. And if I have time, we might go out and take a look at the, fr the fig tree. Okay, well spring is just about here. Today is my average last frost date. And sure enough, it's gonna work out this year. We've had frost last night and the night before, but I think we're out of the woods. The weatherman thinks so too. So uh, later this week, we're gonna be planting our tomatoes and peppers out in the garden. We're gonna get these beds cleaned up and ready for those crops to be uh, transitioned in. So there's a lot to look forward to. I'm gonna show you how to grow tomatoes and peppers this year in pots as well. I pretty much do that every year. Uh, but right now, we've got to address our fruit trees. Uh, they're about to break dormancy, and, well, we need to care for them. Uh, we need to get them ready for a growing season by giving them every advantage we can. And since our fruit trees are entering into their second year here on this property, their second year of growth, uh, we need to train them and begin building their structure. So what we're going to do today is uh, compost, top dress with compost, give them a new layer of mulch, and then we're going to prune our apple trees and I'm going to show you how we're going to start forcing out our scaffolds where we want them to be. We're going to also look at our plum tree and see how that's a different shape, a different uh, structure that we have on that one and how we're going to clean that up. What we're practicing here is called backyard orchard culture and that's a, that's a kind of a term that I think was started by Dave Wilson Nursery. They're doing a lot of research into keeping fruit trees small and planting some fruit trees, multiple trees in one hole. And uh, you can do that. And down here in the subtropics, we've selected apple varieties that are good for our climate here. Uh, one of them was actually developed here. And we're going to, um, we're going to keep them small. I don't want to get a ladder to get my fruit. Uh, I don't want to have to pick the fruit um, you know, way up in the tree. And I've got my trees spaced, oh, 10 feet apart. Well, that's, that's pretty close. So we, we need to keep these trees small. And we do that by aggressive pruning and intentional shaping. We want to keep our trees where the fruit grows at, at you know, hand level and head level, no further. We don't want trees that go up into the power lines and you can't get fruit and it drops rotten fruit all the time. I have my one-year-old apple tree whips here and they're growing really well from a bench graft. I have uh, put a little bit of area around my trees in which I intend to keep weed free, but I've got a lot of, of encroachment here from the grass, and I don't want that in there. So what I'm going to do is mulch it really well. This particular tree is a Reverend Morgan. This tree, this apple, was actually developed right here in the Houston area, so uh, I expect it to do well. I'm going to take some of this compost and just spread it around the base of my tree. I'm going to be careful not to cover up the graft union there. There we go. I need some hardwood mulch. I'll put it on relatively thickly along the edges. I could even bring this back a little bit here. I like the bricks. They help me to get the weed whacker up against the uh, this growing area here and not cut the tree. There we go. But I'm keeping this uh, tree from being in direct contact with that mulch. This is my, uh, let's see, what is this? A shell of Alabama. And on this apple tree, we've got a lot of weeds in here, Bermuda grass, clover, a lot of encroachment by the lawn. We'll want to smother this out if we can. So I'll pull out as much of this as I can. These runners especially. All right. I found that when mulching over Bermuda grass, you get about a year of suppression and then the Bermuda grass finds its way through. You got to pull it and mulch again. But that's all right. We can do that. <clears throat> we ain't got nothing here but time. I'll expand this brick a little bit so that we can get in here with some mulch. 
Look at that, man. That is so beautiful. Nice and rich and black. That is a good top dressing right there. We're going to pile this mulch really deep on the edges especially. Help suppress all that Bermuda grass from croaching in. Just pile it on. Find when you try to ring a bed like this with bricks, your grass always grows through the edges where the uh, bricks meet. And if you just kind of put some mulch over that, it'll help suppress that a little bit. But ultimately, your lawn, your grass, your weeds are going to prevail, and you're going to have to do this again. But if you don't do this, your tree is going to be in competition with all that grass, all those weeds, and you're going to be in a bad position from the get-go. So why not just go ahead and give it some mulch? <clears throat> As this mulch breaks down, it will feed the tree, and that's always a good thing. So let's draw back the mulch away from the graft union, <clears throat> let that tree grow in this little volcano-type caldera. Put a little mulch down here. Block the light from those weeds. There we go. All the way to the edge of my brick. These weeds are always going to win because they're weeds. They're, they're optimized for taking over and winning. What we're doing here is just trying to stunt them a bit so that we can get some vigor in our tree. And what I'll do in the future, once this tree gets a little more established, I'll pull all this stuff out and uh, expand the mulch ring to three or four feet wide. Uh, but I want to get this tree established now um, while it's small and while there's no reason to do all that big work that you're just going to have to take up again after two or three years and replace, if I can just do it on a small scale here. So there we go. Okay, we have these apple trees that we've grown from grafts. They were literally this tall down here at the bottom. They were one inch scion woods on a rootstock and they've shot up this year, uh, this past growing season, and they're called whips now. What we want to do next is to shape them and to train them to grow in the form we want. So I'll show you how we're going to do that with some notching and I'll explain the form that I've chosen for my apple trees. You can see how the buds on this tree all point in different directions. And so the, the goal is we're going to choose the buds that are pointing in the right direction that we want a branch to grow. What we're building is the main scaffolds of our tree. Okay, So we want to have four main scaffolds, maybe five. It depends. If you're keeping your trees as small as I am, I'm going to choose uh, four and then I'm going to have some insurance buds. I'm going to leave them behind uh, up near the top just in case you know, the ones that we choose don't take very well. I want four main scaffolds on my apple trees, and then from those main scaffolds, secondary scaffolds and further years can grow. But for, to get to that point, first we have to choose our scaffolds and orient them in the direction that we want to go and where we want them to grow along our apple tree uh, trunk here. So let's get down and pick some, pick some buds. All right, these buds are looking like they want to bust. I want my... Uh, tree to be four, five, six feet tall max, and we're going to prune it and keep it that way. What we're going to do then is train our tree to a modified open cent uh, uh, central leader. Uh, you can train your trees to be a, a goblet shape, the open center, but for apple trees, uh, I don't, I don't want that. What I want is branches coming off a main trunk that go horizontal or even bend downward. But to get those branches, we've got to choose their location. What we don't want is our main scaffolds all coming from the same area. If I just cut this off right here, um, then the apical dominance of this plant is going to tell all these buds right up here near the top to grow. And what's going to happen is this tree gets older and the trunk gets bigger and those branches get bigger. All of those main scaffolds are right here in the same area and that makes for a weaker tree. It's okay with like a stone fruit tree or something, but with an apple tree, I, I don't want that. So I'm going to pick buds that are about, well, about, normally you'd do six to, or uh, 
12 to 18 inches apart. But since we're not going for big trees, I'm going to have to reduce that down. And I'm going to choose this bud right here to come this way. I'm going to choose this bud up here about six inches to go that way. And I'm going to choose this bud to go that way and this one right here to go that way. One way you can do that is put some clothespins on here aiming the direction of the bud and get a look at it and walk around. So let's do our choosing now. We're going to go here and that's coming off of this angle. I'm going to go here. Actually this one right here looks better. I'm going to move up about that far. I need one to go that way so we'll choose that guy. No. I need one to go this way. There's one. So I can look down and see I've got some good buds here going in directions that I want them to go. Don't think I want it to be this high though. Hmm. So here's where the decision making comes in. We have to decide, okay, which, uh, which direction do we want all of our limbs to be growing. I'm looking for healthy buds that look nice and plump. There we go. One this way, one that way, one that way. And that guy. All right. Now we have a north, south, east, west kind of system here where all the scaffolds will not be coming out from the same location. We will keep our tree about this high. I'm going to talk about this center leader in a moment, but uh, we're, going to, we're going to do our little cuts here. All right, you can see the bud that we've chosen. Here's how a plant works. Just under this bark layer, there is a green layer, and that is the cambium layer. That is like the vascular system of the plant. All the energy, hormones, nutrition that flow up and down through that cambium go through the phloem and the xylem layer and tell the buds when to grow. They distribute the resources to the plant. What we want to do is notch right above that bud so the upflowing um, growth hormone will pause right there where we've disrupted that cambium layer. And in that area, this bud will think it's the top of the tree. And that phenomenon that we call apical dominance, that's where the tree wants to grow tall and you know put all its energy to top growth, that will occur right here and help send out a branch. So what we're going to do is keep our, our clothes pins on so we don't lose track. And I'm going to come in here and just above that bud, I'm going to notch one third of the way around just into the cambium layer. I'm just getting into inside the bark, maybe a, a millimeter. You don't have to go deep on this. That bud now has a better chance of growing. And what we're going to do is leave the, the next couple of buds near it. And we're going to just pinch off all the others that are around it so these don't grow. That will ensure that that bud is going to be our growing bud. So I'm going to pinch off all these. I'm going to leave these here, these two here. And I'm going to leave that one down there just in case we don't have success here. Okay, I'm going to do the same to this one. Let me get the camera close in. You can see our clothespin has selected this bud, this little bud right here. Right above that bud, I'm just going to cut into the cambium layer just a little bit. I'm not going to go more than a third around the, the trunk here. And now that bud is selected. I'm going to pull this one out. You can just take your thumbnail and pinch those buds off. And... I'm going to pull this one out too. So all the buds in between my selected ones are removed so they won't grow. I'm going to leave an insurance bud right there and one right there. I'm going to take this one off, take this one off. Yeah, so there we go. Let's uh, do another. Here's one right here. I think the sun is shining better. You can see what we're doing. So I'm just going to notch right above that bud into the cambium layer and we have that one that we hope will grow. There's one here I'm going to leave as insurance. You can take that one off and I'm going to leave this one down here as insurance but I'm going to take that one off. That one. All right so that's enough taking off. Now we've notched our tree. We can remove 
our pins. This tree is ready for branching where we want it to branch. We'll come and we'll take the insurance branches off if we get success with the ones we selected. But that's later. All right, so we've made our notches. We've selected our branches. We want those branches to, to grow. We want all the growth hormone to go to those branches chiefly. But we also need this plant to have some leaves and uh, to be able to photosynthesize well um, in its second year here. So what we're going to do is we're going to top this tree, but not way down by our branching cuts. We're going to let a few buds up here leaf in the center, the central leader, and one of those buds will become the more dominant leader. And that's the one we'll cut back each year, the one that becomes the dominant leader. What we're going to do is we're going to let a, a little bit can of canopy grow in the middle of our tree. We're going to let a little bit of canopy shade the middle section of the tree so the trunk doesn't get burned. Uh, when this tree starts to break bud, we will paint it with um, uh, some Ivy Organics white uh, protective coating to help this trunk not get burnt. But for now, we're going to leave a few, a few of these buds up here. And we're just going to knock that apical dominance back. We just took off about four inches. What that does is these buds will bush out now and our main buds down here that we select will branch out. And well, we'll see. If it doesn't work, apple trees are forgiving. We just come back and prune them again next year, let some more growth happen. Um, this is a multi-year project, these apple trees. So I want you to know that if you don't get it right, just wait and try again. I want to show you once again, close up, we've chosen this bud right here. So we're going to take our knife, just over it, rock in a notch. It's as easy as that. This bud is the one we've selected. There's a bud right behind it for insurance. This one I'm going to pinch off. This one I'm going to pinch off. Now here's a situation where our apple tree hasn't grown as tall as the others. So, you know what I'm going to do with this one? I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to see how it branches out on its own. And, uh, because it still needs to put on some more height before I have room to pick my scaffolds. So we're going to leave it alone. We're going to let it grow a little taller. It will naturally want to kind of branch out. We'll kind of let this one be our, our uh, well, our experiment here. This one is a Fuji. I won't get fruit on this for another four or five years. So it's a slow process. We can let this one just sit and, uh, you know, grow some more. This was a replacement apple for my Anna, which was in here and died. Uh, the graft got knocked off. But uh, this one, yeah, got a slow start. All right, we have a plum tree here. And uh, this tree is being pruned to four main scaffolds, but they're mainly from the same location where we chopped this tree off. This was a six or seven foot tall tree when I bought it, uh, well, maybe five feet, but we chopped it down to a foot, 18 inches or so. We just chopped it right off. And we selected these four branches here to be our main scaffolds. And what we're trying to do with this tree is to have an open center and have it shaped like a goblet or a funnel. And so what we're going to do here is kind of clean up some of this growth. We've got a lot of growth coming off where we don't need it down here. Anything aiming into the center we're going to take off. Simple as that. Don't want anything growing toward the middle. I don't need a lot of these little branches here aiming that way. We've got this guy that shot up and is heading in the middle, so we're going to take this whole thing out. And we're going to clean up the rest of this. I'm going to go ahead and let these branches grow this year, at least in the spring, and see what we get. Uh, this tree didn't do so well in terms of foliage. It did a lot of growth, uh, a lot of branch growth, but it didn't do a lot of foliage this year, and I'm not sure why. So what I'm going to do is let this tree show me what it, where it wants to grow and how it wants to grow before I stunt it. And summer pruning is when you can stunt your tree to keep them small. What we're doing right now is just cleaning it up and getting it prepared so that when it breaks dormancy and all these little swollen buds break out, uh, well, it won't know that it got pruned, but it'll be in a much better condition than it is right, right now. We're going to clean it up. Let me show you how this tree looks. You can see as we look top down on this tree, there's our main cut from the, from the last year. And you can see we chose four scaffold branches heading in four different directions. And I would have liked for this one to go on that way more, but it didn't work out that way. But what we want to do is get rid of this kind of growth in here that's moving toward the center. That's going to grow in the center and plug up everything. Um, you know, this probably can come out. But for the most part, that tree 
grew quite nice. We have decent br branching on this tree already, so I'm not going to top any of these leaders. We're going to let them grow, but in the summer, to keep our tree small, we'll come back and then we'll top, because summer pruning helps to stunt growth, while spring pruning actually encourages growth. What we're doing now, while the tree is dormant, encourages growth. The tree wakes up, it only has a few channels of growth that you've left it, it's going to send all its energy to those, and uh, that's how it's going to grow. Hey, thanks for joining me on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening today. This video will be added to my Backyard Orchard Culture playlist, and I know some of you uh, have been uh, interested in growing apples in your backyard. You've been asking me questions, but I encourage you to try it. It's a slow process. Um, we planted these a year ago. They were grafts, tiny little things. Um, but here we are in our first year where we start to get to work in earnest and trying to get these things shaped. That's all the second year is about. We're not looking for fruit, although you know you might get a few little ones. We're not looking for fruit, we're looking for shape. We're looking to build a strong structure on which our fruit can grow in the future. So fruit tree and uh, fruit tree culture is a slow process, but it's a very rewarding process. And you know what they always say, the best time to plant a fruit tree was five years ago. Well, now's the time, you can do it. Get those in the ground, it's an unstable world and steady place, you never know what's coming. It's nice to have a little fruit hanging around sometimes. Thanks for joining me today on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Please like and subscribe. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.